This is the Whirly Bear Productions podcast. I'm your host, Amber Williams. I discuss film finance and distribution with filmmakers and entertainment lawyers. My guest today is John Cleave. He's a director, writer and producer, as well as a creative director, drone DOP, photographer and designer. In this episode, John talks about funding his new B Corp streaming platform, New Yonder, and shares advice on crucial topics such as carbon neutral, sustainable productions and pitching. Full disclosure, I had technical difficulties throughout the production of this podcast. John was polite and patient and professional. He's been a very kind man and anyone would be lucky to work with him in the future. So, John Cleave, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's great to be talking with you. Yes, you too. I was super excited. Um, so can you explain to us what New Yonder is? Yeah, so um, New Yonder is a relatively new streaming service, but it puts the user at the heart of the journey. Um, so we have the production and the distrib- distribution. So we create stories that sort of um, inspire, inform, engage um, about our natural world, but it can be any genre. And um, it basically inspires you um, through the power of story. Um, and then the sort of streaming service aspect of it is where we give at least 5% of that revenue to the planet. So if you watch an ocean-based film, we give to seagrass restoration and that's how it works. So you're not only moved by that power of story, you're also contributing to real change um, in the real world. And in addition to that, the way in which we produce those films are um, also considered. So all the films are um, Albert BAFTA certified productions they're carbon neutral sustainable and in addition to that we are a certified B Corp so the entire end to end of the business is sort of thought through as being a good company. Which is a great idea because when you watch a documentary and you really believe in um, the cause you rarely kind of go on and actively do anything about it so your platform is really innovative it's fantastic. Um, So and We've had a chat before and you talked about you kind of not really fitting, you kind of falling in between the slots of getting funding because it's uh, environmental and entertainment and also a technology platform. So can you talk us a bit about sort of where you're sourcing um, funding at in the beginning and where you look for investors currently um, and you're looking for sort of equity for the business right so how do you go about finding those investors yeah so um i'll give you a bit of an overview kind of how that all began and um i'm from an advertising background Uh, i was creative director at one of the top agencies and um so i i am not from the traditional film um sort of space in the way the way in which that uh, film traditionally conventionally works. Uh, I, I tell stories in advertising and then I want to extend that into um, producing longer form content. So I went about um, doing things the way that I thought that it would work by looking at other industries. And one way of doing that is looking at how tech companies raise. And that's the way I did it. Because um, traditionally or conventionally, um, there is no right or wrong way of raising capital for creativity or film because is a very difficult thing to sort of add a value to. And that's where I guess is uh, why there's so many different ways of funding. But conventionally, what I've come across is that actually a lot of films are just individual film funding and debt funded. Um, Whereas I'm looking for a company to be funded or a slate of films to be funded. And that's even sort of harder to get uh, funding for. It's like a needle in a haystack. So um, we're a media tech and impact company, like you said. So um, trying to use that sort of fund fundraising cycle, just like a tech company does, and that's through equity. So uh, you kind of, uh, the first round was creating a minimal viable product with a a series of uh, films and launching a global streaming service, which is the the tech and the impact is off the back of that. Um, And then in addition to that, it's about, um, then going and raising again and talking to venture capitalists. So the first one's kind of an angel round, um, smaller investors, and then you show, okay, well, we want to create something a lot larger now. Oh, sorry. 
and you say, okay, now we want to create something a lot larger now. Um, and that's where you need to get uh, a lot more funding through equity of the business. So that's uh, through venture capitalists. And the the hard thing around that is that you find out that actually media VC or media venture capital, um, where people invest in equity, it's uh, very hard to come by as well. But I wanted to do something different in a way that it wasn't debt driven and it wasn't to do with like single films. I wanted to do it like you're investing in this business. You're also investing in um, a certified B Corp and 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 you want to go through that change as well of trying to use business as a force for good. So when you find an investor um, and if they do say no, do they then pass you on to someone that they think might invest with you or? So the the way that the investment world works is uh, <laughs> is uh, it's a, <laughs> the wild west sometimes. Um, you can uh, you can get a lot of um, uh, well, basically uh, no replies. You can get a lot of no replies. So you need to spread um, your bets into kind of who the right people are. Also for yourself, it's a two way relationship. Um, so you're looking out there. There's no there's nowhere that says these are the here's where your X Y Z of uh, venture capitalists are right for you. Uh, each each venture capitalist has a dip, has a series of verticals. So they might invest in X, Y, and Z. And if you don't fit into that vertical, they won't invest in it because their LPs, uh, that's what they've agreed with with their LPs. So you can send out emails and um, you can, uh, you know, ask, uh, say that this is our proposal for, here's our investor pack. We're looking for X amount and um, this is to scale and this is through equity. Uh, you might not hear back from some, you may get um, a fo like a follow-up call to, to learn more. Um, so, for example, like I've done quite a few follow up calls uh, with one venture capitalist at the moment. So we're right in the heart of it, right towards the end of it. Uh, hopefully it closes. But as you know, with anything in life, until something is actually delivered, everything could fall apart um, for a number of reasons. So, you know, you um, in a traditional venture capital firm, you generally sort of go through the, maybe the analyst and then it goes through to the wider team and then. It can it can fall apart at any part of that. Even if you found the perfect company to to collaborate with you, it could it, it um yeah. It, so so it's a bit of a it is literally a very very difficult and long process. And that's just like that's just finding the right partner. There's every other aspect to it and getting it right. But so doing something like what I'm doing, where we're creating a series of films, we're creating a tech company. Um, well, we're a media company, but creating the tech platform and the impact side, that venture capitalist needs to believe in everything. Um, yeah. So there's three aspects that they need to believe in. So it's, again, even harder to um, sort of move into um, getting funding for that because it's not a generalist. It's a niche space, which is important as well, which also gives you a benefit where you can carve carve yeah. a piece of the pie and grow out from there. Yeah. Can you um, talk more about what a B Corp is? Yeah, so- and how you got certified as a B Corp. And what, sorry? And how you got certified as a B Corp. Yeah, yeah. So um, a B Corp is essentially companies that use business as a, as a force for good. And rather than a bottom line of just money, uh, profit, uh, you have a triple bottom line of people, planet, profit. You're still a profit-making business, it's a private limited company, for example, in the UK. And what you're doing is showcasing how you can use business in a um, for good. Uh, so, for example, Patagonia is a B Corp. Um, there's so many. The UK, um, we've been certified now um, for a year, and we're a pending cert. We we're a pending B Corp um, from the outset. So when you, in, when you're a startup, you can apply from day one to be a B Corp. And then you have a year to prove you're going to do what you've said. So um, you change an article on, on your memorandum um, in company's house. And that's kind of you committing to like uh, being a good company. But you have to go through a series of third party um, um, sort of analysts. And um, and and it, it takes a really, really long time um, to, to do. But what that does is um, by doing it at the beginning, um, it it sort of sets the business up for all the things that you want to do that are right. 
So like I said, it's people, planet, profit. You're not just talking about, okay, well, we're thinking about carbon um carbon offsetting you know it's not it's it's every single aspect of the business the way in which that you work with your crew so for example we consider what's happening on and off screen and our talent and and um uh, how how do you um work with your employees what benefits do they have and everything like that it's trying to do consider that business in its entirety and it's got like kind of four aspects to it of like you know community governance and and things like this um so what's great is that it, it gives you the tools to go and and figure out how to set up your company to be like use business as a force for good and uh, it's incredible for me it's been incredible and then alongside that um our productions i've used the toolkit by bafta which is an albert uh, program to ensure that it, that we made our productions as sustainably as possible so new yonder originals they're all carbon neutral certified by them and it's not just about saying there are aspects of filmmaking that you just can't off off you know you just can't that you're going to have a, an impact but it's all about reduce 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 as much as possible and reuse and recycle so the, the three r's so you learn about all these terminologies and ways of 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 having to reduce your impact as much as possible as a business so that when we're creating a series of um, when you're scaling the business, you've got everything in place to grow outwards in a way that everyone to date has done kind of not much <laughs> of, and they're trying to retrospectively do what we're doing, but on a much bigger scale, which makes it much more difficult as a, as a business that's used to doing things in one way. Whereas I've set the building blocks and rules to be, this is what we're doing from the outset. And it makes it so much easier because it's not trying to look backwards and go, mm, we need to change that and change uh, behaviors within a business. So in a nutshell, that's kind of how a uh, uh, B Corp works. Um, and now since, uh, so we just um, had our first year of being a B Corp, a certified B Corp. Um, and that now there's over a thousand in the UK. So there's um, uh, businesses. So it's great. We had this, amazing um sort of event at the end of last year to celebrate this in the natural history museum um it, so yeah it starts to show that there's this moving um community of businesses that uh, are feeling um in the same way but also it's a label um that you don't just slap on it's it's a label that is what an end consumer can then say okay these people or this company aren't just saying you know, so I'm just saying we're going to do this. They're actually being sort of um, verified that they're doing X, Y, Z. And 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 I think that's the whole point of it. And and also to be like, so for example, I just uh, did the uh, first year impact report and it talks about kind of what we said we were going to do, what we're doing and where we're going. And like you kind of really open and transparent about what things happen and what's going right and what's going wrong. And and that's the whole point about it is that you're trying to be as clear and transparent as possible um, because nothing's perfect. And you're like, well, that didn't go well. Or, uh, for example, we're a startup um, and this year we're doing no production. So I could say that we've got 14 X um, lower commission uh, emissions than the last year. But that would be, you know, it's not being transparent. So you, you're kind of saying like you're trying to figure out what that's like to grow as a startup um uh and and uh yeah there's so many aspects to it i could talk about it all day in its own right but at the end of the day i think it's an incredible thing to do and if there are businesses that are looking starting out not to the 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 first thing you could say is oh we'll do that once we're set up it's a lot harder to do something retrospectively than when you're setting up the building blocks of your own business yeah it does sound very complicated <laughs> um so what are some basic little changes that people can make within their own productions now um, in terms of mm -hmm. Albert and zero um, carbon, in, uh, carbon neutral? Yeah, so in terms of like what uh, companies can do now, I mean, what's great about, then there are loads of different um, kind of toolkits around the world. Um, the US has some, um BAFTA set up I think it's like a, a really really good one 
the the Albert program. Uh, what that enables you to do is, is, and you can, as a production company, you can go and set that up right away. You can go and set up an account and it, it allows you to do the pre-production uh, and post. So the most important thing is that you're forecasting what you're going to do. So when we were writing, well, so we were script writing um, and and looking at the locations instead of product in terms of production, we've got uh, creative, um, we've got uh, impact production and production happening all in synergy. Whereas often it's kind of segmented and you go, that's that, go and sort it. So sometimes there were things that needed to change uh, in a creative aspect because of the um, the production aspect, not the impact one. Um, but you can start to see how by doing it all in tangent, although sometimes quite complex, it allows you to really for, like forecast up front. So, for example, our Korean film Three Moons of Biangdo, other than two of us, our entire film crew is um, um, is is from a is from uh, the region in in Korea or, or geographically based there. And that was a, like a conscious decision because you're locally empowering um, local creativity. And that means you're also collaborating with international co-pros. And then in addition to that, you're reducing your own footprint. So it's thinking about things in advance. You couldn't retrospectively do that if you've gone and chosen a director or someone, let's say, or DOP um, and then thought, oh, let's let's change that. You can't. So it's all about the upfront strategies and what you're trying to to do. Um, and that ended up being an incredible movie because our the type of film that we were doing was an observational documentary and we wouldn't have got the film that we got without having that local knowledge. And and it was incredible. Uh, so I think it was yeah the perfect uh, sort of decision to do. But that's just one aspect. That's thinking about the sort of community and impact side in the in the um, in that um, upfront um, pre. But uh, what anyone can do is just think about so like I send out a green memorandum to everyone on board and and I say this isn't just the production company this is every single member uh, can contribute to to reducing their impact here's the things that you can do and then it's all about it's all about a sort of circular feedback so we say like we welcome your inputs on board to try and improve this and you do that before and you do it after and you say, like, how can we improve even just as a business, aside from your sort of the way in which you're doing it in a sustainable manner? It's every single aspect that you're trying to do, because we want to ensure that if we're doing a good film, everyone's um, enjoyed making that. And then the things that didn't go well, we figure out we get that feedback again and try and um, sort of amend that or, or refine that and craft it for the for the next films. So always learning, always iterating, because you're never going to get everything right. But going back to your main question is there's so much you can do in the pre-prod, um, even to its uh, smallest piece of, OK, well, everyone on set that goes is all renewable batteries, you know, um, uh, so uh, they're rechargeable batteries. So that and, and when you're sort of doing audio, that's a huge thing because all the lav mics, you know, you take up so many batteries, um, every single sort of um bit of contract or digital signing waiver forms everything like this everything's digital so there's no paper on set when you're having all your interviews you can do it all remotely um that was an amazing thing so like everyone in our films was from either all over the region um or like different parts of the uk from wales to you know um scotland and everything happened remotely i guess covid is a great thing to have helped assist that but for us, like our editor for Wild Owls uh, was Bristol based and the whole thing happened remotely other than um, me going down for the last sort of aspect of it. To, but it all happened like backs and forths. And and I think that's the, the beauty of it all is how you think about how from, that's a post-production consideration that everyone freelance can you're not just thinking about your immediate vicinity. And when it comes to post, you can work with anyone. And that's the amazing thing. You get talent from anywhere. So again, that's again, a community thing, but also from a, a transport point of view, you're not having to go and re relocate yourself or bring someone there. Um, and I think that also comes down to trust. So you're coming down to picking the right team. And for me, it was about, it all came down to team. 
and uh, you go through a lot of interviews, a lot of rounds, and you're trying to find those that perfect team that come together. And that's one thing that I think being a B Corp and the stories we were telling and the streaming service we were trying to create was that everyone put in 210% more effort because of the values of our company and the types of stories that we were trying to tell. Um, so it wasn't just a gig. And, and you can really feel that. And, and that's what was to me amazing like the people were incredible and and they came on board because that this is something that matters to them yeah that's great advice <laughs> sounds like yeah your work is even more fulfilling um yeah. and your films were beautiful they were really lovely i really enjoyed them so everyone should go and watch them <laughs> thanks <for sure. laughs> yeah they were um so I am talking about the future of the company. I know you, you said before you wanted to expand it and bring on films that aren't just um, New Yonder originals. So how are you going to go about acquiring those films for your platform? Will you be going to festivals? Will you be taking unsolicited um, submissions? Yeah, so this is a really, really interesting part of, of the bit of the journey and um like i said before i'm from an advertising background uh so i'm from the creative industry but the way in which that we do things are sometimes uh, extremely similar but it could be extremely different and one of those things is when you're acquiring or licensing content right? so distribution from a film perspective is is a kind of a very different place so i mean our po positioning right now is to to scale fast um, and that's through scaling with other people's content um, in addition to creating more new under originals. And some of those aspects um, will widely vary based on what the future holds. Um, so you can only forecast, but the main points are to, to license uh, content and that's either going through sales reps uh, who, who own catalogs or it's going to festivals um, and 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 finding those gems but also over time you start to get people coming to you so we get people coming to us all the time already and talking about um and talking about how like can we do a collaboration together or like a co-production together i've got this um uh, film i want to make so some even the the person that we introduced us together um uh, we had met through the film circuit we were at jackson wild our films were nominated and um and he lives in um, Madagascar. And and we were like, well, we need to definitely collaborate on producing a film together because uh, we both know the standards of of the films because they're they're in that sort of festival circuit. Um, let's do something in the next chapter. So you organically start to meet people um, who who are sort of um, singing from the hymn, sing, same hymn, <laughs> singing from the same hymn sheet. And, and you kind of learn about like, oh, yeah, and, and you're growing your network like that. So that's one way in, in which I'm growing my network to and they may have films that are already made that they've made independently and we can come up with a um, sort of partnership together there. Or it might be that they've got something in the future that we either commission or co-produce or produce as a New York original or they go and do it and we license it. Um, all those things are, are possible. In terms of unsolicited emails, um, again, that's a, something that I guess is a a legal thing. Most people don't accept unsolicited emails in terms, just in case of uh, discrepancies. Um, uh, yeah, so I don't know how that one works at the moment. Um, <laughs> uh, but I think, like for me, it's about getting the best stories onto New Yonder and finding ways to do that as a startup. So like we'll have our own challenges. So if someone, so for example, uh, if something is really great at Sundance, um, they're going to want to sell it to one of the big five um, streamers. Um, so it's trying to figure out how to compete in that space as well. So there are many factors that it's not just one way as it's like where the, the productions, the company or the producers of that film want it to be seen as well. So I think there's, there's loads of, different ways of uh, trying to grow this and scale this. And also um, we've got something planned ahead that we're looking at the sort of media um, 
sort of landscape and the way in which we want to showcase our content in in quite a different way to what everyone's doing at the moment so there's so many different ways for us to get, like produce or acquire content in across different verticals so i think it's really exciting and i think it's going to be uh, quite refreshing for an end user to go oh my god there's all this stuff and um i'm here to be immersed so and that's what i want to always be doing people say like why don't you just make great films and sell it to a big streamer? The whole point was that they're not going to deliver what I want to set out as a vision. So for example, imagine we had 200 million subscribers a month uh, from the outset, the impact that we would make in the world. And those sort of larger corps aren't going to be doing that. So you got to think what's a business that um, is of great value to me. And like, why am I setting this up and why are we trying to differentiate ourselves and what are we able to offer that, is different to everyone else and that's one of those things we're trying to really we're not just saying and everyone's trying and that's a great thing and i think the more people do it the better but we're really trying to we set this company up with that intent so it's like not trying to think about it in a different manner um and then grow out from there hopefully that answers some of it <laughs> yeah absolutely and it would be great to see what you make with Chris as well, because I know he's really passionate too. So Yeah, oh yeah, he's incredible. And that's the amazing thing is the people that you meet on the way. So so from a filmmaking perspective, all the people we've worked with today, all the people we've met at festivals um, and everything like this, they're so incredible and the things that they're doing and the stories that they're telling. Um, and for me, the biggest thing that I've taken away today is the protagonists I met in some of the films. They... They are they literally like life changing when you meet them and you're interviewing them or you're observing their world and their lives. Uh, you think like, OK, the world is great. And that's the point for me is that this is a sense of optimism and that there is like I don't look at the world's glass ha like half empty. I'm always like this is um, and, and you have to if you're a startup because it's a roller coaster. You wake up on a Monday and you go, well, where are we? Um, <laughs> um, so you have to always see things as sort of glass, three quarters full, maybe. Um, and I think that's a, a great way to look about it. And the types of things that are being done by people in the world are incredible. And why not showcase that? Because no one's telling that story. Um, but in addition to that, like I want also want people to know that New Yonder isn't going to just be a, let's say, a documentaries or wildlife. It's going to be all genres um, in their own right. And that's something that's really exciting as well to broaden that market and that audience spectrum, because then you've got the people who kind of what need to learn the most who, um, and that's like having that broad, broad market. Um, and it's not just about learning. It's just about, feeling that power of, of film i mean as i said i come from advertising it's all a world of make-believe and i think there's a huge benefit to um you know fiction non-fiction uh, animation and all these different types of genres to just to, to, the world of film and story is so incredible and we've only started to scratch the surface in the way in which we kind of tell people about how incredible our planet is so at the moment, we've got Wild Isles, which is a natural history conservation film that is all about um, sort of the like how humans and people and individuals and communities are changing our um, restoring our planet or conserving what exists within the UK. But that applies everywhere. We have Three Moons of Biangdo, which is a completely geographically different place. There are UNESCO protected um, heritage uh, called Henyo. They're female freedivers. These are three sisters. They're in their 60s. Their mother's 92. And they all sort of coexist with the natural world. And they freedive and harvest from the oceans four to five hours a day. Um, and that's a story about humans and humanity and how you how you live alongside the planet. And that's not saying, for example, the end user to go and live that life, but it's what can you do how can you think about it in that in like in a different way and in addition to that we've got an arctic expedition adventure film which is in production and that's kind of you, you can start to see that there's geographically different and culturally different and um yeah even just from a narrative they're all different even the way it's directed observational to more conventional so we're trying to think about doing things really differently from a story perspective as well because there's so many ways to, ways to tell stories you're very inspiring. 
with, <laughs> you know, in this day and age, things are starting to feel a bit sad, you know, when you switch on the news and things like that. So it's very inspiring and uplifting to hear from someone like you being so innovative and positive about the world and spreading the stories that you are spreading. Um, and I really want to go to the Hebrides now <laughs> to watch in the film. It's like, wow, I oh, never that's knew. Great. That's, so that's amazing. Mm, and that's I think it. that that was the whole thing. So I started um, alongside my advertising career. I did a lot of drone photography and film and I won lots of awards and recognition featured here and there. And the whole point around that was that I was trying to bring the outdoors in and showcase that, you know, the, the there's an amazing world on your on your doorstep and that's how it all started i was going on all these amazing adventures even within just the uk of your own doorstep what's this incredible place in the outer hebrides um who knew and that's like when making wild owls who knew that there were basking sharks that are, can be up to the length of a, a bus um uh, on our doorstep white-tailed eagles that have been restored there's a 45 year story there um there's urban beavers been reintroduced into uh, Plymouth City. Um, um, a whole island of puffins in Wales, in Pembrokeshire. Um, in Essex, there's a um, uh, sort of restoration program that's that the the London has helped uh, impact in a positive manner to create a rare wetland uh, for rare breeding birds. And I think these are amazing things that are happening that even within your own culture or society, you don't even know about because no one's talking about them in this sort of manner. Uh, maybe they are, but, um, you know, I know kind of, I focus a lot of this on this stuff and I still haven't heard loads of these stories. So I'm always looking for the stories that I haven't heard being shouted about. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know about them. <laughs> so my mind was blown <laughs> <laughs> that's great <laughs> yeah what advice do you have for pitching going into pitching meetings and what are some have you got some questions that you're always asked yeah so would that be pitching for investment or pitching uh like from a venture capital side or pitching like as a producer talking to to new yonder for example yeah, um, both actually, I think. Okay, so I think pitching from, uh, let's say, producer to New Yonder, um, I think, depending what stage it's at, I think if it's really in its infancy and in its initial stages, and we've been, let's say, connected and 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 yeah, mutual connection, everything like that. Um, I think it's all about having everything out, out front going this is a story we're going to tell and this is how you know it's it's really kind of painting that picture up front of of that story and uh, come again coming from the advertising background that log line that one sentence what's going to hook everyone and um sometimes i get a story and you go oh we're, we're going to be doing this research here in this location um i'd love to make a story about it would you be interested in being part of it but there's not enough to that um, I have no idea what that's going to be as a how are you going to captivate someone for 60 to 90 minutes we make features you know um, or if it's a series how are you going to really captivate someone and that's what we need to know so at the end of the day for me it's all about story and then how you're going to produce that in a sort of um, in, in the whole manner that we've talked about uh, and then um, how are you going to do it in a way that is kind of like for example like the by, com by combining the production and the writing and the directing all together, we were able to really reduce our um, our sort of output in terms of finance like expenses and everything like that. So you're trying to think about doing things in a in in creative ways as well. Uh, you can still tell amazing stories that are cinematic and, and blockbuster feature quality of craft. Um, but there's no right or wrong to how you go and pitch to someone. If you've got a great story, you've got a great story. And that's what it comes down to for me. That's what happened in advertising. It's all about the story. It's all about the idea, the big idea, the big idea. Um, and if you've got something that's really compelling that you can tell someone in a sentence, then you and that a five-year-old understands, then you've got a great um, thing to go and do. And I think that's that's how it works. That's all, that's all you need is the magic. The rest we figure out. Um, <laughs> and then when it comes to, uh, for example, our side or a producer trying to get um, funding through equity, and if it was doing it through my, my sort of uh, 
angle or headspace in in terms of being a, a production and streamer and everything going to them you need to have asked every single question that that like you're doing you do your business plan you do your SWOT analysis you're doing all of your like what are the what are all of your weaknesses because your weaknesses will come up at the beginning and you need to be able to answer those because you've looked at that and you've looked under the hood and you've gone okay these are all the hid <laughs> all the issues uh don't close that hood and try and hide it away you need to figure out how to resolve that and that's the best way through consumers through um you know kind of asking yourself you need to um evolve all of that and you need to really kind of um take that head on because when it comes to the um a vc one of the main things that happens is they get so many requests that their job is to essentially find a reason to say no no without even responding to you so if you if that mindset is already set up where you you're trying to even get uh, a, a call from someone you've cold emailed and you know you, you already got your sort of you're on one leg and uh and and i think that's the whole point is that you need to make sure that you've uh sort of crossed the eyes and and whatever the um dotted the eyes and you know and um yeah it's a really complex um way and i think the most important thing is that when you're doing something like this it's something that you can't not do because there are times where you're like why am i doing this or why are we doing this and i think that's the most important thing is that you're doing it because um there's no other option you've got you love it so much and that's what keeps you going and sometimes they say an average idea gets made and because of the consistency um so like it doesn't mean it doesn't matter it doesn't mean that it needs to be the best idea in the world but it's it actually got made because that person had perseverance sometimes also actually it's knowing when to give up so um there's no right or wrong to the way of the in which that you invest capital um it's not an easy journey there's no rule book i've got i've gone to accelerators i've done this and that i'm quite seasoned in it now i know how it all works i know what they're thinking i know what they want um uh, it doesn't mean that that's going to get you capital <laughs> um and it doesn't mean that what you're doing is wrong either and that's again like the main takeaway is you could get i don't know three four hundred no's it doesn't mean that that's not a good idea it means that you haven't found the right person that believes in you and shares those values um for let's say that that particular story um it's uh yeah there's no uh, way to to really describe it other than that uh, you just got to find your own path but keep going well this has been absolutely fantastic and i am really really grateful it really has um, oh, it's great to be part of it thank you yeah i'm inspired and i wish you the best of luck and i can't wait to see what you make it's been brilliant so oh, thank, you. thank you for sharing this with the world and all your knowledge uh, I'm sure other people have a lot more so <laughs> you've been really brilliant I'm very impressed oh thanks so much and thanks for you know um inviting me to be part of this and yeah I hope it all goes well for you as well and and the have the comparisons between other people's um journeys would be really interesting to see as well
Our planet is full of life. From vast oceans to wide open skies. The diversity of life here seems infinite. But one of those here on Earth has been changing the balance for all its residents. Yet this is a story of hope. Meet the people and communities who are making a difference. and showing us the way to a brighter, wilder future. Restoring our natural world and restoring our faith in humankind across Britain's wild eyes.